Hi, welcome to this edition of Digital Discoveries. And this is kind of a special edition because this is our last show of the 2013 school year. So I want to personally thank everybody that's been uh, following along and watching us, not only on cable channel 15.2, but also on YouTube and on Vimeo and all the places that we post our, our videos up online. So thank you very much for following us on Digital Discoveries. This episode today is directed toward our teachers and administrators, and we're calling this one Things to Do This Summer, Do-It-Yourself Professional Development. So we all know that during the summer we all do all kinds of different things, like we'll go on vacation or maybe we'll start a new hobby, we'll start doing that thing that we've always wanted to start doing, that summertime is a time of starting over, I guess, and we might want to work in the garden, we might want to do these things. We want to plan our courses for next year, but there's something special that that we can all do that maybe you're not even thinking about right now, and I hope you do, and that's to teach yourself something. Teach yourself something, doing it yourself, do it yourself professional development. And so to kind of get your do it yourself professional development juices flowing, we've got some uh, some starters here that you might want to get going on and use those as a jumping off point for your own professional development and then if you maybe you don't like our suggestions you can do it do your own but these are kind of places to at least start looking so let's go ahead and start looking at some places where you can look and find your own professional development so one of the things that we've noticed is that teachers love to have professional development delivered to them but what's happened over the course of the years and with the explosion of information on the internet is that it's very hard to tailor professional development to individual needs, especially when you're trying to train three, four hundred people at a time. It's hard to, to individualize that. We may hit or miss our professional development target with you in particular. You may have a need that people that provide professional development aren't providing, and that's where do-it-yourself professional development comes in, where you can come in and say, I need this, this, and this, and this. You can go out and find it yourself. And so uh, here's some places to start looking. We're going to talk about three different ways here to teach yourself something this summer. The first way is to subscribe and listen to a podcast. Now, for those of you that still are not familiar with what a podcast is, a podcast is kind of like a little radio or TV show that's can be very short, maybe like five minutes long, but it can also be longer, up to an hour long. Now, some people say, well, how can I subscribe to something like that? Well, if you have, for instance, a, sh a program like iTunes, it's got lots and lots of podcasts on it that you can actually subscribe to. Also, uh, you can load those podcasts onto your smartphone or your iPod or something like that and listen to them in while you're driving to and from work or you're driving around town or even when you're going on vacation if you're taking a long drive you can load your uh, you can load your smartphone up with with podcasts and listen to podcasts as you're driving along so let me give you some ideas of where to start looking these are some of my own personal favorite podcasts and then I'll give you a show you where you can go find some more one of the really nicest uh, places to go get podcasts is the BAM Radio Network. And the BAM Radio Network produces all kinds of uh, education-related podcasts. And so um, this particular one, K-12 Greatest Hits, that's a really good podcast. And they cover a wide variety of, um, of topics. One of the things that I really like about the BAM Radio podcast is that no two shows or no two podcasts are alike. They take uh, they take really a bunch of diverse topics, and so that one podcast may not have interested you, but the next week's podcast really is interesting to you. So that's kind of the neat thing about these BAM radio podcasts. So those are good ones to start off with for like general education knowledge. This one's got a terrible name, but a really good uh, topic. The School Sucks Project. It's a terrible name for a, for a podcast. However, the topics are really, really interesting. What the, uh, what the producers at the School Sucks Project uh, podcast do is they look at issues that affect schools and um, 
and a lot of them are like negative issues and they address those issues and they talk about those issues and these are usually about 30 minute podcasts and they're really really interesting because what they'll do is they'll bring in experts in the field have them discuss um, uh, they'll have them discuss that that particular topic so it's not just a bunch of people just yapping at each other they actually have people that are experts authors in the field researchers in the field about whatever it happens to be so for instance they might look at uh, uh, something like uh, bullying and talk about the the different issues related to bullying at schools they might talk about uh, for instance uh, one that I just listened to recently was about how teenagers are always blamed for society's ills and how that changes over the course of the years it's really an interesting uh, interesting podcast and so they had like a educational historian talk about how teens are looked at over the course of the years and so school sucks project it's a really good uh, really good podcast to get going on for those of you that are familiar with ted talks and who isn't by now ted talks are probably the most popular um, video and audio podcasts that are out there there's a whole group of podcasts that are just related on TED to education and so what they do is they call all those uh, all those TED talks that have to do with education they put them into one place and there's a lot of them there's a lot of education uh, podcasts in the TED talks and so if you're familiar with TED you know how high quality those those talks are but if you're familiar with TED talks then uh, and you're familiar with education then you kind of get a pretty good idea of how TED Talks educations are they're really really good and you can see just by that picture there you may not be able to see really well but some of those experts in education or the, the big names in education right now like Ken Robinson's in there Jeffrey Canada's in there uh, Bill Gates is in there. there's like a whole bunch of people that have to do with the topic of education right now the national topic NPR National Public Radio puts all of their shows or all their segments from all of their different shows that have to do with education into one podcast. Well, it's a weekly podcast, so it's called the NPR Education Podcast. And so what they'll do is, so if they have a, an uh, episode on Morning Edition or if they have an episode on All Things Considered or if they have an episode on some of their other programming that they have that we may not even hear about here in El Paso, they'll put those into their podcasts. And so NPR education podcasts, you may think, well, yeah, I'm, I might listen to those NPR shows. What's neat about these is that they have NPR shows that may not be on your NPR station at, at your, in your city. So uh, the NPR education podcasts, they grab them all, put them into a single place. Really good listening, high quality. This is another really good uh, podcast here, The Infinite Thinking Machine. This is another group of uh, people that get together and talk to experts about education, education reform, education issues that are going on right now in the world. It's called The In Infinite Thinking Machine Podcast. Really, really good. It's been going on for several years now. So that brings up the question, should I just listen to the podcasts that are the most recent ones? And that's you shouldn't you should actually go back if there's a a podcast that's got three or four years worth of of material in it go back and listen to them because who knows who had a really really good podcast that one two years ago might have been a really really good podcast the infinite thinking machine is an example of that they have lots of content over a period of years and just because it's two years old or three years old doesn't mean it's not relevant doesn't mean you can't learn from it so th that's another really good uh, podcast to listen to so besides me where do you get these podcasts from well a good place to look is look at places where they kind of aggregate podcasts into a single place and one place that's really good here is the EduBlog Awards we've talked in digital discoveries about EduBlogs and there are places where you can actually start looking for people's blogs but there are also places where you can start looking for education podcasts as well so um, that's the URL for that, tinyurl.com, and then mx2ynwg. We kind of smoosh that large URL down to a small one. That's a really good place to look for podcasts. Uh, another really, really good place to look for podcasts in education is iTunes. If you have iTunes, if you have that program on your computer, great place to look for, for podcasts. So those are the award-winning ones right there. So, Okay. What's another thing that you can do this summer uh, while you're lounging about the pool 
and uh, thinking about uh, going and weeding your garden. Well, some other thing that you can do is you can read a book about education. There's lots and lots of books about education right now. And when I'm talking about reading a book about education, what I'm kind of thinking about is education in general, not maybe specifically your particular curricular area, but like uh, the broad questions about education, because you need to start looking about at, at the, the larger issue of education, because when they, people start talking about education reform and education changes, you need to have that kind of 20,000 foot view of all education. So let's kind of look at some of the books that are out there right now that, um, that uh, you might want to start reading. One of them is a free book. It's called The Connected Teacher Powering Up. This is a series of essays that, that is written uh, uh, from the PLP Press, and it's free. It's, uh, if you just go to PLP Press and l look for Powering Up, The Connected Teacher, you will uh, be able to download that book for free. If you want the hardcover version of it, the paperback version, it's like nine bucks. But why do that? If you've got a, if you've got a computer, you can download the, the free version. If you've got an iPad, you can download the free version. So um, The Connected Teacher Powering Up, it's about 27 different essays on how to get connected, get up online, uh, get your students going with technology and it's not necessarily curricular specific it's very uh, it's very general and they're, they're written most of these uh, essays are written by other educators other teachers that are doing what they're what they're saying they're actually in the classroom they're actually doing these things with their students and so they're not just theoretical concepts these are all these are all examples that are actually being done Another uh, really good uh, book that just came out recently is called Connected from the Start. And uh, this is geared, of course, to our primary students, but Kathy Cassidy in her book, uh, Connected from the Start, shows how her primary students and how she got her primary students up and running in a digital classroom with uh, uh, just minimal equipment and how she got them connected to students all over the world. And, uh, I think the, the sum total of that book is if she can do it, then anybody can do it because she's not any, any, any more special than anybody else in, a, in an elementary classroom. And so she kind of walks you step by step on how to get your students connected in a digital world. Again, this is not curricular specific. It's a kind of a general view of education. Another one, now this one is uh, kind of curricular specific. This is one from the Texas Computer Education Association, TCEA. They just came out with a book called iPad in Elementary English Language Arts. And this is, uh, the reason I threw this one in is because of our TLI grant, where we have English Language Arts from K to 12. We have iPads put in there. This book kind of uh, is a blueprint for how to, how to use iPads in your classroom in the elementary level for your English language arts as the, as the title says and uh, it gives you specific apps that you should use, how to use them, what you should use them with. It's a it's kind of a step-by-step -step roadmap on how to use an iPad in your in your English language arts elementary classroom. So that's a that's a really good book to go by. Now a more general uh, if you want to get more philosophical about education this is kind of a, a neat book because it's a short read. It's only, it's less than 100 pages long. It's called Why School? It's by a man named Will Richardson, who's, uh, who I know. And uh, it's actually a book that's done by TED. It's actually the, the, TED, the people that make TED Talks, they also produce books. And so uh, he wrote this book, Why School? And it's actually, uh, he talks in this book about how technology is changing how our students learn, and so it's a it's a very interesting uh, it's a very interesting book, uh, especially in this time of reform. He like starts looking at the questions: what what's the importance of learning? Uh, what should we be teaching? How should we be teaching that? And so that's a it's a kind of a provocative book, and it's and it's good uh, it's good uh, it's a good place to start in the conversation about education reform. So Will Richardson's book Why School is a good good summer reading, fast read one trip to the beach. You could uh, probably read that on the beach. This, uh, this book here is called uh, Too Big to Know by David Weinberger and this book is, uh, is really interesting because it's not just education specific, it's actually about the whole internet. What should we be teaching our students 
now that they have access to all the information available to them with their smartphone or their iPad or their computer. What should we be teaching them? What's important? What's not important? Um, and what should businesses be worried about now that all the information is up online? And so um, this, is a, this is a really good book if you're thinking about, wow, there's just so much information out there. Where should I start? This is, this is the book to go to. Too Big to Know by David Weinberger. It's a little bit more, uh, it's a little bit more uh, in depth than Why School, which is the Richardson book, but it's, it's, it's well worth the read. So David Weinberger is Too Big to Know. So if none of those float your boat, none of those are exciting to you, there's uh, lots and lots of education books up there on Amazon, of course, the iTunes bookstore. Um, something I want to point out at both of those, as I'm, I'm probably more familiar with the iTunes bookstore, but with both of those, is that there's lots of free books that are available out there. So you can actually go up and, and look for education books that are free. And so uh, if you are short on funds this summer because you spent all your money at Disneyland, that's okay. You can still download a free a free book from the iTunes bookstore or from Amazon.com and, and still get some of that do-it-yourself professional development in there. So those are great places to start. Another place uh, to look is um, ASCD. Uh, most of you are familiar with ASCD, the American Society, the American Society of Curriculum Development, I think. And uh, they actually have a list up there on their website called the 10 books for your 2013 summer reading list. and. Uh, They've got them all up there. Uh, so just uh, if you Google that, 10 books for your 2013 summer reading list, that those, uh, those 10 will show up. And so those are all very interesting books and they all are from ASCD, which is very respected, uh, very respected in education circles. So podcasts, reading books. Third one is, why not take a course? There's lots and lots of online courses that are available for free that you can take and there's absolutely no reason why you can't take them other than either you don't want to, you don't have the time, so I suggest you try to make the time because some of these courses are very short. You could probably take a course, a whole course in a week. So let's look at some of them for instance. I keep coming back to TED because TED's very popular in education right now, but there's a whole course on iTunes U called Creative Problem Solving. It's absolutely free. It's got all the handouts. It links to all the uh, uh, TED Talks. And so that's kind of what's neat about these courses is that they have the handouts, they have the reading, and they have video all embedded into them. And they're very, very interesting. So the first one I suggest, go to iTunes U and look up the course Creative Problem Solving. Absolutely free. And uh, it's, uh, it's something that you can take that you can uh, then use back in your classroom when you come back in the fall. Another course, brand new, this is from the University of Texas at Austin, UT Austin, Hook'em Horns, is uh, the flipped classroom. This is a very popular uh, topic right now in education is the flipped classroom where you do the homework in the classroom, you do the instructional, the traditionally instructional side as homework, and so you flip that classroom around. There's a whole course up on uh, iTunes U called the Flipped Classroom, and actually there's several courses uh, on the Flipped Classroom on iTunes U, and there's lots of free books on iTunes in the iTunes Bookstore on the Flipped Classroom. So not only will you get free books out of these, but you'll also get the course as well. So you can take a whole course on how to flip your classroom from UT Austin. So how cool is that? Without ever leaving El Paso, you can take a course from UT Austin this summer. Um, here's a really interesting course. Uh, it's called Just in Time Professional Learning and it's a course on how to take courses. It's kind of like what we're talking about right now, but it's a course on where to go find uh, that professional learning that you need and it's a course on how to, to make the most of professional learning and how to make it suit your needs. It's kind of like you're making an individual education plan for yourself for professional development. And so it's called Just in Time Professional Learning you take the professional development when you need it instead of it waiting for it to come to you. You need to learn something, this course tells you how to go find that information. So that's pretty neat. It's from the um, Apple Distinguished Educators on iTunes U. There's a whole group of those people that are out there uh, making courses on iTunes U. And if you haven't visited iTunes U, you really need to because it's a really, really uh, exciting place where there's literally hundreds of thousands of courses 
available from universities all over the all over the country. Uh, here's one again. Go back to our TLI grant and the number of iPads that we put out in our campus. Uh, this is from uh, Union University uh, School of Education, and it's integrating iPads into the classroom. It's a whole course on how to integrate iPads into your classroom. So if you've been assigned some iPads and you're not satisfied with the professional development you got for them, you can actually take a whole course online this summer on how to integrate those iPads into your classroom, maybe a little bit better than you did this year. So uh, absolutely free. You can just uh, search for that uh, course, Integrating iPads into the Classroom on iTunes U. It's there. So where are some places to go look? For uh, iTunes, uh, we mentioned iTunes U. If you have iTunes on your computer, which I hope you do, there's a little button when you go to the iTunes store. One of the little buttons in the upper right hand corner is called iTunes U and that's where you would find all of this material. There's another website called Open Culture and it's, uh, the website is uh, openculture.com slash free online courses. One word, you can see it right there at the bottom. If you click on that one, you go to 700 courses that are available online for free that anybody can take on all kinds of uh, of material. So if you're weak in a particular area of something that you're teaching and you need to bone up a little bit on how to, uh, uh, you know, you took it in college but it's been a while since you took that and you need to refresh yourself on uh, a particular topic, you can go to openculture.com, uh, free online courses, and just find tons and tons of, of material. Uh, and it's absolutely free. It's absolutely free. There's, uh, there's <laughs> we are living in a time of, of, of great excitement because now you can go take an online course from universities that it used to be only a few people, a few select people were allowed to go to. Anybody can go to those courses now. Anybody can take them online. All you need is a, is a internet connection and a device to, to watch and you're there. So iTunes U is a great place to find uh, materials for your online course and open culture is another great place. There's others as well. Uh, MIT, if you go to their MIT website, they have all of their uh, courses are online. Every single one of the MIT courses are online. So if you ever want to take an MIT course this summer, now's the time to do it. So I guess if I have some, uh, uh, some advice for you this summer is don't wait for the professional development to come to you. You need to go to it. You need to learn how to, um, uh, how to make the professional development uh, come to you. You need to, sh to uh, design it yourself. You need to do it yourself. Professional development. That's that's the that's the new wave in professional development. And I know it kind of sounds like, well, that's kind of the, the. What about all those people that do professional development? Why aren't they uh, Why aren't they planning professional development? And and what happens in general is that professional development is more general uh, for people and it may not suit everybody's needs. You've probably been to sessions where you've gone to the professional development and maybe it's six hours long and you got 20 minutes of useful information out of it or maybe you got an hour out of it or you've been to professional development where the whole time was useful information. It's kind of sometimes it's a hit and miss in education but if you're designing it yourself, if you're if you're bringing the professional development to you, if you're saying this is what I need, this is what I need, this is what I need, then you're designing it. Again, you're making it like your own individual instruction uh, instruction plan to uh, to uh, for your own professional development. That's what you need to do this summer. I hope you have a great summer. Hope you have fun this summer. I hope you uh, are you rest and relax and you recharge yourself. And uh, I also hope that uh, you take some time this summer to do some do-it-yourself professional development. Thank you for joining me this year for Digital Discoveries. We'll see you next year. Bye-bye.